in the dappled light of this fine autumn morning. I find myself in a playful mood, playing with light and shadow. A symphony of birdsong accompanies my performances. As I visit the gentle giants one by one, I make sure to check and see if anyone's home. And much to my delight, I see a pair of galahs coming in and out of a tree hollow. Autumn brings light drizzles of rain and as the thirsty soil drinks something magical happens underground. From their casings the rain moss emerges. In its form as a moss the insect lives just one day. This little wonder reminds me that life is precious and fleeting. And this tibet of wisdom helps me make peace with time. I choose to live my life, however small and insignificant, joyously and to the fullest. So the workshops have begun and I'm having a delightful time so far making toy theatres from paper with children. Uh, as a result though, I haven't had a lot of time this week to work on the dollhouse, but after a beautiful walk this morning, I seized some time to play and create and ended up making some mini saucepans and a kettle. So I hope you enjoy watching me play and create. So I want to say a big hello to our new Wonder Weavers. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And I'm sending a big heartfelt thank you to Dot from The Doll Cupboard. Dot, thank you so much for mentioning me in one of your recent tutorials. I really appreciate your support. And Wonder Weavers, if you haven't already, please visit and subscribe to Dot's channel. Dot is a kindred spirit. She loves uh, making miniatures and telling stories and her tutorials are really fun and entertaining. Dot has a wonderful sense of humour and it's just like me, she encourages you to play and inspires you to be resourceful and just have fun. That's what it's about, following Wanda and playing. While having a morning cuppa, I find myself playing with two coffee pods and my imagination is ignited. I can see the beginnings of a mini kettle and a pot, so I decide to have a play and see what I can do with them. After removing the capsule's contents, I cut away its seal. I will first start by making the pot. I'm going to use 
the base of the capsule, so I first cut it away, leaving walls around one centimeter in height. Next, with the help of an Australian 10 cent piece, I draw a circle on black cardstock. I then cut out the circle and then glue the paper to the bottom of the capsule. To seal the paper, I also add a layer of PVA glue. Next, I start work on the pot's lid. For the lid's handle, I'm going to repurpose two worn metal beads from an old earring. I cut out a second circle from black cardstock. This time as I cut, I leave a small margin around the circle. As you will notice, the circle is larger. I make sure that it covers the capsule and I cut away any excess. Next, to give the lid a concave shape, I place the black disc on an Australian 20 cent coin and with my embossing tool, I emboss a circle. And also gently fold the paper inwards. Then with my awl, I create a hole in the center of the disc. I then place a shortened earring pin through the hole. Next, I place the repurposed small round bead onto the pin and secure it with glue. Meanwhile, for the pot's handle, I cut a small length of beading wire and glue it to the sides of the pot. To give the pot a metallic appearance, I mix gold and red mica with PVA glue and then paint the body and the lid of the pot. I trim the earring pin. And there you go. We've made a pot. The second miniature I make is a wrought iron kettle. I take a second coffee capsule and trim its rim. I then turn the capsule over and cut a small circle out of the capsule's base. Then with my awl on one side of the capsule, I pierce a hole. For the base of the kettle, I cut out and glue a disc from black cardstock. And as you can see, I'm also applying a layer of PVA glue to seal the paper. I also add a layer to the capsule. For the kettle's lid, I'm going to use a cap from a dishwashing liquid bottle. The walls of the cap are a bit long. None of the tools I have are strong enough to cut through the plastic. When I work out a way to cut the wonder weavers, I'll share it with you. But the cap will be fine as is for now. I decorate the cap with two beads. I place the larger bead on the cap and then shorten an earring pin and place a metal round onto it. And then I place the pin through the hole of the larger bead.
For the kettle's handle, I first bend at a 90 degree angle two metal earring pins. I trim their ends and then glue them to a rectangular bead. The last part of the kettle I need to make is the spout. For the spout of the kettle I cut a long and triangular piece of black cardstock and then roll it into a cylindrical shape. I glue the edges together. I then cut diagonally along the thinner end. I do this also to the opposite end. I then glue the handle and the spout to the body of the kettle. As a finishing touch, I paint the body of the kettle with PVA glue mixed with black acrylic paint. And there you go. The dollhouse now has a kettle. Thank you for watching Wonder Weavers. I hope that you have a restful and peaceful weekend wherever you are in the world. Until the next time, take care, stay well, and don't forget to play. Adios. Ciao. Ready to make carrot soup, Cordelia? Yes, I know. We need a stove.